Beth, this painting is a total failure. One goal he had, which should be mentioned and not overlooked, was to get out and actually plein air paint from from life, paint these flowers from life. And I actually accomplished that goal, uh, even though the painting didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to. And for yourself, that's something that you should acknowledge. Um, if you even just get out to paint in a lot of ways, sometimes that can just be a success in of itself. And the circumstances for this painting were not that great, to be honest. It was very hot and kind of a windy day. And I didn't have a lot of time to paint. And so just the fact that I was able to um, get out there and, and attempt something um, kind of was a success, I think. Um, actually, this sort of has a notorious story behind it because um, while I was painting, a lady came and asked me to uh, take photos of her family. I think she saw you know, me filming for the YouTube video and saw that I was an artist. I thought that I would have a great opinion. And uh, the reality is I, mean, I obliged her. I, I thought that it would take a few minutes, but she actually had a lot of family showing up and had several specific things in mind. It ended up taking a lot longer than I thought. So it was really funny. I, I came home and said, yeah, I just did a uh, professional photo shoot for this family uh, unexpectedly. But um, I think the fact that after all that hubbub, I could return and actually complete a painting. I think that that is a goal worth um, mentioning that I accomplished. So I think the second goal I had of wanting to paint a unique composition within a square format and that's some format that I don't use very often and ultimately I think that that was sort of a failure. Um, I give myself some points for effort but um, this isn't particularly an interesting composition and I think that one thing that I should try again is to think outside the box with regards to just adhering to the rule of thirds. My mindset at the time was that the bloom itself would be the focal point, but I think that I probably should have cropped in much more and not just thought of the bloom as being the focal point, but actually picking a certain petal or aspect of the bloom to be the focal point. I think in the future, I want to spend more time on composition and uh, not just rely on the first thing that I see. One thing I wanted to do as a goal was to accurately render the form of the petals. And as you've seen so far, I've wiped away uh, what I did and I've wiped away several more times. I was really struggling with kind of the difference between the shadow and the midtone and the lights and also um, just getting the right colors as well and ultimately I think I failed in this regards I think I was a little bit too subtle with the transitions um, between shadow and light and I think that I should have pushed the contract between shadow and light at least initially I lost that strength of the shadows and my highlights are too bright and they're too washed out because I use too much white for them. So lesson learned from this, push the shadows more, at least initially. And I think that I would also establish my lightest light earlier on in the process so I know how high and how low I can go tonally. Because I think that my highlights are too high and my darks aren't dark enough at the end. Uh, one of my other goals was to actually follow a tutorial by Heather Ean Martin, one of my favorite contemporary painters. She does fantastic florals and is a plein air painter, does oil and gouache. But my mistake was not breaking down her process or directly following her steps at all. I was just kind of relying on my memory based on what I had seen and was generally inspired by her. But uh, I think in the future, the lesson learned would be to rewatch a tutorial before I paint to remind myself of the steps that I should take. And better yet, I should probably take notes when I watch a tutorial or take a class or see someone else paint so that I can implement that process in my practice next time and have something that I can refer back to it. One goal was to capture the colors of the roses, which is extremely hard to do just in ordinary circumstances. And in this case, it was a compounded issue because I was mixing my pinks and purples using alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And the advantage of this mix is that I do get some nice deep colors um, and I would in theory get more color harmony. But what I found out is that 
the um, potency of those two colors just isn't sufficient to realistically achieve the chroma needed to uh, get these roses to look proper. And so I think the lesson learned for next time would be to bring some more potent colors with me and maybe even to buy some new tubes of color. Um, I'm thinking something like quinacridone magenta, for instance, um, along with knowing that just my standard palette is probably insufficient for some of these florals and I should probably do some color charts and mixed tints of some really powerful colors to get an idea of what can be accomplished in paint and what can and can't be accomplished with my normal uh, color palette. One goal I should have had but didn't consider carefully was managing the thickness of my paint. You can see here I go too thick too soon and my only option is essentially to wipe away and start over. And so next time I should be more careful about working thin to thick and consider using less medium or maybe even no medium at all. And I think that this also ties in with my brush selection. I think it was an obvious mistake that I went um, too small too soon with a small round brush. Um, I really spent most of the time using this small round brush and you can see that I, I'm kind of getting overly caught up in detailed painting which is slowing me down and distracting me from the more important goals and so I should probably next time try to post a reminder on my palette and go through my mind mentally what steps to take to make sure that I follow a system that will lead to success.